Kenny from Hope West Wickham Congregation and we're focusing on Genesis 28 in today's devotional. So previously, Rebecca, Jacob's mum, told Jacob to deceive his father Isaac into giving him the birthright instead of to his older brother Esau, which he did. After Rebecca found that Esau was planning to kill Jacob after his father's death, she told Jacob to move away. Isaac explains to Jacob that he doesn't want Jacob marrying a daughter of Canaan and that he must choose a wife in Paddan Aram. Isaac blessed Jacob in the name of God Almighty and also passed on Abraham's blessing to him. On the way to Paddan Aram, Jacob was very tired. He had no pillow, so he rested it on his head on a rock. Whilst he was asleep, he had a dream. There was a ladder placed on the earth and the top of it reached towards heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. The Lord stood above and around Jacob and said, I am the God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I'm giving the ground on which you are sleeping to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. They'll stretch from west to east and from north to south. All the families of the earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. Yes, I'll stay with you. I'll protect you wherever you go and I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until I've done everything I promised you. God made it very clear to Jacob that he was with him and that he always will be. He reaffirms that the promised land will one day belong to Jacob's descendants. The ladder itself symbolises Jesus and that Jesus is the only way to reach the Father and that there is a real link between heaven and earth and God and man. Jacob woke from his sleep and he said, God is in this place truly and I didn't even know it. He was terrified and he whispered in awe, incredible, wonderful, holy. This is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob woke from his dream and made a monument out of the stone he'd used as a pillow, poured oil over it to consecrate it and called it Bethel, meaning the house of God. Jacob then goes on to say, If God will be with me and keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and clothing to wear and if I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God and everything that he gives me I will give a tenth to him. Why would Jacob need to make this promise to God when God has already blessed him? God hasn't asked Jacob to do anything in return. His promise has no strings attached. He loves Jacob regardless and just wants Jacob to know this so he can have a relationship with him and for Jacob to trust and have faith in him. Perhaps Jacob's response to the father's words should be something like, Dear God, thank you for your promises to me. Thank you that you will always be with me and that you will protect me. Amen. I think it's so ingrained in me and perhaps you too that it is only our good work, service and performance that will get us into heaven. It's hard to shake that off. It's hard to believe that once we have said sorry to God for messing up again, that he just forgives us just like that. It's taken me many years to accept that God loves me and protects me regardless of my actions. Even before becoming a Christian, he was protecting me. There were so many times I got myself into tricky situations and he always provided a way out for me or sent someone along just at the right time to protect me. I remember one time I had gone to London with a group of so-called friends. I must have been about 17 or 18, um, something like that. I wasn't confident in knowing my way around London and so I just followed the crowd to the restaurant that we were going to. At the end of the meal, everyone said they wanted to go to a nightclub, but I really didn't want to. I suddenly felt very scared. I don't know why. I just wanted to go home, but I didn't know how to go home. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where I was in London. So I just stood on the street and I just cried. And all my friends, friends walked off, um, apart from this guy that I didn't know. Um, he was part of the group, but I, I didn't know who he was. He asked me if I was OK and I told him I wanted to go home and he said he'd look after me and make sure I got home safely. So we got on the bus and then the train and then we got back to his house um, where he called a cab to get me home. I still don't know who this guy is, um, but he looked after me. He didn't expect anything from me in return and I never saw or heard of him again. Isn't that amazing? There are many other instances like this and I thank the Lord so much that he was there for me even when I was behaving so appallingly. My mum prayed for me for years to know the Lord and a month before she passed away she baptised me. 
The Lord looked after me before I was saved, so why on earth would he not look after me now? God loves you so much. He adores you and he is with you now and will always be with you.